One of the questions I see that gets asked a lot by people who find my channel is, can I still have sex when my foreskin doesn't retract? Or do I need to retract my foreskin to have sex? You know, or, you know, my, my uncircumcised penis retracts when it's soft or flaccid, but not when erect, you know, what do I do? And for all these questions, it shows that our culture, which is very pro-circumcision, has created this um, anxiety about the normal penis that really shouldn't be there. But it's been created not because of the foreskin, but because of everybody else's bad attitude, basically, towards it. They don't know what the normal process is. You know, and, and in reality, the thing is, it's, you know, the foreskin naturally doesn't start retracting until the teenage years. And this is a process that happens over time. Sometimes it's earlier, sometimes it's later. It's not a problem to be 18 and still not have your foreskin retract or maybe only for, uh, retract a little bit, you know. Um, so I, I try to tell people, you know, there are stretching exercises they can do. This is like if, you know, if they feel that it's tight, if it's bothering them or it's causing them discomfort, you know, take the end of the foreskin, try to stretch it a little bit. Um, but if it's not causing a problem, if it's not hurting you, in other words, then there's no need. When the foreskin is not retractable, there's no need to stress over being able to retract it to clean it. This is a lie that pro-circumcision people push that the inside of the foreskin is dirty. This is not true. Smegma is also not a problem. Furthermore, when the foreskin is tight and it's still connected to the glands, it is protecting the head of the penis. Smegma, things like that, are not going to get inside where it's still connected. So it's, it's something where, you know, you don't, for your first... 10, 15 years of life, it's normal to never have seen the head of your penis. Obviously, that also includes you didn't retract the foreskin to clean it. And that's because it's often been connected like the fingernail to a finger or thumb. You don't peel back your fingernail to clean under it. That's ridiculous. It's connected tightly and it keeps out germs and bacteria and whatnot. It's the same thing with the foreskin. Once the foreskin starts being retractable, you know, then, you know, it will happen gradually over time. And once a guy is comfortable, he can pull back his foreskin and rinse it with water only. Again, never using soap. Soap is very bad and will cause problems. However, there's not this need to stress over being able to do it. As soon as the foreskin you know, is retractable, it's going to be sensitive in there because it's the first time the head of the penis is seeing the light of day, so to speak. So there's no need to immediately think, oh, I need to get in there and I need to be scrubbing it. You know, first of all, it's, you rinse with water only, no scrubbing involved. But it's not something that's, you know, needs to be stressed over and it's not this urgency that people seem to think that it is. Furthermore, it is not strictly required that the foreskin be retractable for sex or masturbation. What happens is that, you know, sometimes the foreskin, you know, the foreskin is stretchy and, and it's movable and it moves over the head of the penis. And this is what creates a lot of the pleasant sensations. So sometimes even if the, the, the end of the foreskin, you know, that um, overhang part that, you, you know, that everyone will see in a picture or whatever, that overhang part, that may be tight. And so maybe it doesn't go back, back over the head of the, the penis when erect, but you know, there's still that movement. So the foreskin is still moving. So, you know, masturbation, sex, all those things are still possible and are still enjoyable. Only in extreme cases, you know, where someone might be having pain or discomfort or is this stretching or anything like that even necessary, you know, or, you know, needed? 
um, stretching exercises, there's steroid creams that you can get. Um, circumcision is not needed. People will try to tell you that it is, but that is a lie. Circumcision is not needed for these things. There's creams and there's stretching exercises and that will do it. Uh, and furthermore, like I said, if there's no pain and no discomfort, it's not a problem. It's not dirty inside there, and it's not more likely to cause you cancer, despite the lies that they, they tell you. That is not true. Absolutely not true. Smegma is not cancer-causing. Not at all. This is a lie. So, for sex, people ask, you know, do I need to retract my foreskin before having sex? No, you don't. You know, part of the pleasure of having sex is that foreskin movement. If you just pull it all the way back, you're kind of taking away that aspect of the experience. You know, when you have sex, you can have the foreskin be covering your head. You know, as you begin the sexual penetration process, let's call it that, um, the foreskin will naturally come back and forward as, as part of the, that process. And um, so if you begin with it covered, you're just gonna have more of that movement and more flexibility. Um, and if it doesn't retract during sex, that's okay. It's still gonna be pleasurable for both partners. So it is not necessary that you uh, are able to retract. And even if you are, there's no need to pull it back and retract it all the way before beginning sex. No, begin with it covered. Why not? You know, I mean, foreskin is there to enhance the experience. So why why try to pull it back as if it's, you know, as if you're avoiding it, you know? Use the foreskin, That that is part of it. Um, but I think people have gotten so used to the idea of a penis without foreskin, which is really not normal. I mean, human beings have removed a part of the penis that's supposed to be there and somehow that mentality has been communicated to them from what they read and all this that their foreskin needs to be retractable uh, for sex or that they need to retract it before sex why i mean you can you can ejaculate and and everything with the foreskin still completely covering the head of your penis now, some guys automatically retract when they become erect, and, and that's okay, that's normal also. Uh, but some of us stay completely covered, you know, and you can pull it back, but if you don't pull it back, then it's gonna stay covered and everything, and that's also normal, and that's also fine. There is nothing wrong with that. One is not, you know, staying covered is not less healthy or doesn't mean it's a problem, and also doesn't mean there's this let me say this phrase that people say, redundant foreskin. There's no such thing as redundant foreskin. A lot of foreskin, it's great and it's wonderful. There's no reason to have anything removed. You know, no matter how long that foreskin overhang is, it's not redundant. It's what's supposed to be there. That's how the penis is designed to function. And when something is designed to function with all the parts, when you remove one of the parts, it may work. Sure, it's going to work. You're going to have pleasurable feelings, all this. But it's not going to work as well as it would have. So let's stop removing one of the essential components. You know, the foreskin is an essential part of the penis. And it's something that should be there. And it should be valued. You know, it, it's something that is very, very important. So... Sex, masturbation, even if you're not retractable, it's still not only possible, but fully, you know, you're, you're fully capable of doing all the things you would, whether you were retractable or not. So don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Don't let anyone make you worry about it. Foreskin is supposed to be there once again. And, you know, no, it's not necessary to retract it before beginning sex. This is not, not a requirement. Let the foreskin cover the head of the penis. Why not? You know, not only does it feel good, but it also looks good, and it's how it's designed to be.